We worship you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You are good all the time. Yes. All the time. You are good. Yes. Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, this afternoon. We thank you, Lord, for being here, Father. We just thank you, Lord, for each and every each and everything that was done, Lord, in decent and in order. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we're going to bring this morning. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to show up in this place, Father God. You are already here, Father God, but show up in me, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, for the words of my mouth and imagine my heart being something but not sight. Amen. Amen. I get a little fast. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> the theme is the woman in the mirror. When God uses all the pieces. So I'm going to use a few of your pieces today. Restlessness and rejection. I'm coming from Mark 5, verse 21. Jesus got into the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. Pleading fervently with him, my little daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her, heal her, so she can live. Jesus went on with him, and all the people followed him, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she hadn't gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus, so she came down up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. He said, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. I will be healed. Immediately, the blood, the blood stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of a terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched you? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had, he had, she had done. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. My topic today is a certain woman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. In Mark 5, it's, it's bringing with a lot of impossible cases. It has been called the Bible home for incurables. There are three cases given in a chapter which are absolutely, humanly speaking, hopeful, hopeless, and impossible. There was a demonic man, there was a diseased woman, and there was a dead girl. All three of these cases was considered impossible in the Lord's day, and they're still in our own day as well. Right. Basically, the demonic would be assigned to a mental institution. The poor won't be assigned to a terminal care unit. And the girl, of course, would be carried to the burial in the graveyard. But as I move through these events in the fifth chapter of Mark, I began to know that Jesus is more than accurate for every situation. There are some, there's no incurable, anything incurable for him. Right. In every circumstance mentioned, we see that Jesus was more than enough. The man who was demonic, Jesus became the great psychiatrist. And the woman who was diseased, Jesus was the great physician. And to the girl dead, Jesus was the great pediatrician. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Today I want to consider the healing of the diseased woman. She is on her way, on, Jesus on his way to be healed, the daughter of Jairus, and he is interrupted as he goes on the way, and this lady interrupt, interrupted him, so he stopped by long enough to heal someone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And once since every miracle of Jesus took place, he moved forward toward the cross. Jesus came
came into the world and made his way to the cross, and he went through the world, this cross already before him. But, but along the way, there was people who was hurting. Along the way, there was people who were in need. And so Jesus stopped long enough to go into carry, stopped by long enough to heal this woman. All right, all right. As Jesus was journeying this day, he was crowded by a crowd. Get me, Holy Ghost. All right. The people was pressing all around him, but in the crowd there was a weak, timid, dying woman who reached out and touched Jesus. And when she did, her life was transformed. Amen. There was those, there were those in the church today who need to reach out and touch Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yes, you need a transformation in your life, and you can have it if you only reach out and touch Jesus. That's right. That's right. Let's take a few moments to look into this passage. And talk about a certain woman. Mm -hmm. If you need to touch Jesus, he is passing by here today. Listen and learn how to touch him. The Bible said that she had an issue of blood. This means that she is hemorrhaging from some place in her body. Whatever the source of her bleeding was, it was certain, a certain condition that literally ruined her life. This woman was to be considered unclean. Hallelujah. Right. This woman suffered some physical stuff. She stopped some physical things because her body was going through some stuff. Yeah. She was bleeding and hemorrhaging, so that means she was weak and her body was deteriorating. All she right. was going to a physical issue. Right. And another thing, yeah. anything that she touched was considered unclean. As a result, she could not mingle with people in public. Unless she came, if she touched anybody, they came to fire. So how does that feel? She couldn't touch nobody. She could talk to no one. Hallelujah. So she was socially, hallelujah, she had some social problems. She could not go to the women's court in the, in the temple because she was unclean. So she suffered religiously. She couldn't even go praise God because she was considered unclean. That's right. That's right. She could not be married because she would defile her husband. If she ever been married, her husband would have been forced to divorce her. Right. She could not work around others because the danger of defilement. This reduced her to life of begging for scraps of food in a distance. Her condition left her on the fringes of society. This woman had an issue of loneliness and separation. This woman suffered financially. This certain woman suffered emotionally. Right. She had been plagued with this condition for 12 long years. Oh, 12 long years. Yeah. If you have an ache for a few weeks, that's okay. Have an ache for a few months, that's all right, but when it gets to be some years, right. that take a toll on your life. The woman paint a clear picture of every person who does not know Jesus Christ as a Savior. Come on with it. You see, the lost person is also defiled by a blood disease. They, they inherited the disease from Adam way back in the Garden of Eden. We all got a blood disease. This condition has, has plagued the last person since he or she entered the world. It's a condition made no better this, this, despite all the efforts of your sinner. You're a sinner, so you have this blood disease. Uh -huh. You see, many lost people spend their youth and even their entire life searching for the meaning and help for the condition. I need some help. I don't know what I'm in the world for. Sometimes we can't even find out what, what we came in the world to do. All right. We still searching and looking. All right. Yes. It gets hard and hard uh -huh. because we don't know why we're here. Because we let our issues take control of our lives. We let our issues take control of our lives for so many years. Then we look up and say, 10 or 20 years have passed and, and our youth is gone. And, and, and we didn't, hallelujah, we didn't let this issue take over our lives. All right. That's right. That's right. That's hallelujah. 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 Come on with it. The woman had heard of Jesus somewhere. Uh -huh. I wonder who told her. Perhaps was someone, somebody else who had been healed by touching his garment. How it happen? Somehow she had heard about this man named Jesus. So I got to get up early this morning. I got to put on my, my clothes. I got to go down to meet Jesus. That's right. That's right. Come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She believed that if I can merely touch the hem of this man gone, yeah. I will be made whole. That's right. That's right. She believed that Jesus could come. He believed that Jesus could come, even the, 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 the Jared believed that if Jesus could come, he could heal my daughter by the touch. Uh -huh. 
But the Bible believed that she could be healed just by touching both to exhibit great faith, and he was a bit, it was a bit deeper than that. She demanded great courage by uh, approaching Jesus in the crowd. You see how this? She's in a crowd, and the same people that ridiculed her, the same people that would not touch her, and she was on the ground walking and trying to crawl to Jesus. Hallelujah. She was taking a big risk yeah. because somebody took a stone the only way to see Jesus, but she took a risk to see the man named Jesus. Sometimes we need to take a risk sometimes to see Jesus. She had been subject to public humiliation and ridicule and, 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 and possibly somebody go come and try to try to take over. But a crowd like that might have gotten worked up and stoned him to death. But, but she said, I'm going to take this risk this morning. I'm going to I'm going to go down and see Jesus. This man is my last hope. I've been serving this for 12 long years. And I got to go see Jesus. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. I know you're right. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. She knew what Jesus would do for her if she only just got to him. Uh -huh. The will she had, regardless of where she heard, what she heard about him, she knew that if she had to get to him, she had to come and realize that Jesus was her only hope. She went with all her heart that if she could just get to him and she would be healed. Yeah. How she reached that place? Have you reached that place in your life? Have you come to understand that Jesus is the only hope you have? Well, He's your hope today, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. There are some who are saved, but like this woman, a burden at their feet. We come to church Sunday after Sunday, and we leave the same way we came because we didn't leave our issue at the altar. All right. Hallelujah. 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 We didn't leave her. We didn't even bring nothing with us, so we can't take nothing with us sometimes. But we can, we can pick up Jesus and we go to the house and say, Lord, here am I, sinner. Save my grace. Lord, save me. Here I am. I leave all my stuff on the altar, Lord. Right here, she said, Take me. Take me, Lord. Some of us, the sooner we come to realize that Jesus is the only person who can help you. The sooner you can help is help get the help you need. Yeah. Why should you carry that burden one more step? I'm, I'm not going to go one more. I went 12 years. I'm not going to go one more step. Right. 12 right. years a long time. Maybe yeah. 17 years or 19 years. Yeah. I'm not going to go any further. Yeah. I'm going to go and call. Go and touch the man named Jesus. Yeah. I know he's a great physician. Yeah. I know he knows all about me. Yeah. He's a mind regulator. Yeah. I know the man named Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. But when she was near enough to him, she reached out the trembling hand and touched his girl garment. The word said touch. She clinged onto the same little thread, the same little thread that hang down, the same thread that, that walked the dusty roads in, in Jerusalem, the same thread that went up and down the dusty street. Those dirty strings. She held on to him and said, Lord, she has reached out and said, I'm going to just close my eyes. I can see her right now. Close my eyes and to reach out and touch the thread on his robe. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not being afraid of rejection. Uh -huh. Not being afraid of being humiliated. Yeah. Not being afraid of being stoned. Yeah. Not being afraid of people saying anything. Not even being afraid of anything because I'm going to do what I got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Yeah. As we travel down the pathways of life, yes. we are brought into contact with Jesus through grace of God. Yeah. When we are at the crossroads, the simple exercise of faith in him brings salvation to the lost soul. Some of you are at the crossroads today. You, you might have smiles on your faces, and, and, and you might have smiles on your face, and you might dress, be, dress up on the outside, but you got some crossroads in your life. Yeah. But now it's time to exercise faith in him so you can be saved from disease or your sin. I've been carried around too long. I don't want to tell anybody, hallelujah. I need to tell Jesus, hallelujah, about my troubles. Yeah. At that moment, I wonder why the crowd didn't touch Jesus. Well, well. It was a whole bunch of people in the crowd. Yeah. But he only fed one woman. One Hallelujah. One. one person. Right now, the crowd is not even in the picture. It's just Jesus and the woman. Yeah. The crowd might as well have even not been there because it had come down to just Jesus and this woman. But sometimes we as Christians, we as female, we as male, or whatever, we can just get time with Jesus. Yeah. All right. All by ourselves. Just me and you, Jesus. Now, I done went everywhere. I done spent all my money. I done got broke. I done, people done, I got busted and disgusted. People don't talk about me. They have my name all over down the highway. I can't get a ride to Walmart. But Lord, it's not you and me. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Never fear that he doesn't care. Never fear that he won't receive you. Never do you realize that this woman could have never touched him if he had not been.
become flesh. That's right. That's right. If he had not become flesh, that was stuck out in my mind. If Jesus had not come down and became flesh, he could have not been healed. That's right. That's right. You see, God became a man in the first place so he could die on the cross, but he also became a man so he could be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. So we know what he so he can know what we feel like. Amen. Yes. I'm gonna slow down, hallelujah. <laughs> But this man has some compassion. Yeah. We have to have some compassion. So that we look at people and just look at them and they're like, hallelujah, so what? Yeah. But Jesus had some compassion. When yeah. he laid his eyes, he said, Jesus got the response from her that he wanted and anticipated. He was waiting on this woman to come by. Jesus still waiting on some of us. Amen. Yeah. She came before him and bowed on her feet and confessed everything. Well, Jesus, it was me. Yeah. I touched your hand. Yeah, yeah. It was no man. Yeah. I needed to come see that. I needed to touch just a touch from you. Sometimes we go to worship service and say, Lord, I just need one little touch from you today. Yeah, yeah. If you ask him, he'll give it to you. Yeah. But you gotta say, Jesus, Jesus, I need a little touch yeah. from you today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was a public acknowledgement of what happened in her heart. She, had, she was different to it was, and it wasn't ashamed to tell everybody what had happened. So when she acknowledged her testimony, Jesus spoke to her and he said, he said he called her daughter. So that means she had a relationship now. She she got a father now, so she's somebody's daughter. Yeah. He tell her to what? Go in peace. Yeah. His word let her know that she had done the right thing for coming to him and touching him. Uh-huh. They discovered that they are no children of God. It said they discovered that they are promised to come into heaven, heaven is their home. But we have discovered that the heirs of God and the joint heirs are with Jesus. But we have discovered that, that this direction and desires of heart have all changed. Sometimes we, 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 we get, when we change, we be transformed. We, that means that our diseases and our diseases, not just a disease, but sometimes our issues, our issues, how our issues of life gets in the way. Yes, yes. When we were young, there were some scrapes and bruises that mama would tell us to leave open to air. Uh-huh. We didn't let them be uncovered, and, and you want to, hallelujah. But you want to wear a band aid on. You want to hide something. You yeah. want to hide it, hallelujah. Uh-huh. And you want to cover that with some bandage or something. So, uh-huh. because it's ugly to what, what, you know, what's going on. So, it's ugly to people. So, I don't want to let everybody know my business. Amen. So, I'm going to cover it up as long as I can. Sometimes, we just, God wants you to pull the cover off. So he can use you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because it's like so what God has allowed us this morning is to see that she has spent all of her resources. She has spent all her money. Now the secret is out and some of us have been trying to cover up our issues so that we want to ex- be exposed. So God said, I'm going to expose you. I'm going to deliver you. So when God delivers us, we let everybody know what we've been through. Sure, the day is an end. Yeah. She had been from doctor to doctor carrying this issue for 12, 17, 13 years. Praying over the same thing night after night. Sometimes we, we just give praises to what our issues is. And whatever we, we pray, that will be manifest in life. We keep praying these issues up over and over again. Praying about the same thing over and over again instead of giving it to God. Hallelujah. 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 But it's not her issue getting better. It only got worse. So now she's broke, busted, and disgusted. Things now literally look impossible. But I want you to know that when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Yes, 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 yes. And matter of fact, I want you to touch three people right now and tell them that God is up to something. Come on now, get it. Hallelujah. God is up to something. Wake somebody up. God is up to something. God is up to something in your life. And you're in the middle of what God is trying to do. You're in the middle of it. You're keeping God from doing it because he, he's up to something. You're in the middle of it, so you need to get out of the way and let God do it. Amen? Thank y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm back through. Hallelujah. God is up to something in life, and you're in the middle of what God is doing. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dare you to wave your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See, that, that, that God, he waits, and we'll we stop trying to fix ourselves, stop trying to figure it out. Wait until we stop trying. God is waiting until we work it, until you work it out. Yeah. God waits, 
waits until all our money is gone. Amen. God waits until our prayer partner won't even take your call. Amen. God waits until you get fired on your job. God waits until you stop believing and depending on others. God waits until it looks impossible. But God waits. Hallelujah. God waits. Yes, he does. And he's waiting on you today. Hallelujah. 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 Your issue, your d dilemma has left you maybe a, your spiritual life on spiritual life support. Tell them three people it ain't over yet. I need to touch one more person. I need to touch one more person. One more person. One more person. One more person. Just tell the person, my issue has come to an end. Hallelujah. Bless be the word of God. Amen. Amen.